Walls are perhaps the most basic element of any building. So regardless of whether or not your buildings need column grids, they almost certainly need walls. So let's spend a little bit of time doing some wall layout. So I'm going to start with the wall tool, which you can find here on the architecture tab. Now you only need to click the top half of this button, but if you happen to click the bottom half and a little menu appears, just make sure you're choosing wall architectural from that list. So either one will work just fine. Now, that will change the ribbon. It'll take you to the Modify tab, and lots of tools and options will become available. And I don't want to go through every single one of these, but I want to just point out a few of the most common ones that you might want to consider. The most important one is the kind of wall that you want to draw with. Revit calls this the type. Now, you can get to the type here on the top of the Properties palette using the drop-down called the Type Selector. And the reason you want to start here is... This will often change many of the other settings. So if you go through a lot of work setting up the other settings and then you change the type, it might reset all of your choices. So always start here with the type. Now we're going to only use generic walls here in this course. Generic walls are just really simple walls that establish basically the thickness of that wall. So I'm going to choose a generic 12 inch wall here. If you want to learn more about working with any of these other more complex walls, you can check out Revit Essential Training here in the library. Now, after I've chosen the wall type, the generic 12 inch wall, that will establish the thickness of the wall. I wanna also consider the height of the wall and I can get to that here on the options bar. So right here, you can see I'm setting the height and it's defaulting to an unconnected height of 14 feet. I wanna change that to a height that goes all the way up to our parapet level. So when I choose that, it will actually change the height of the wall and it's not reacting here just yet. But if I show you down here on the properties palette, notice that the unconnected height just changed to 33. That's because the height of my parapet goes all the way up to 33 feet. Now, next to the height settings is a location line and there's another drop down list here. Now, I'm going to start with the exterior walls of the building, and I think it makes a certain amount of sense, therefore, to draw from the exterior face of those walls. Now, it's not really necessary that you do that, but that's just a personal preference, but I think it makes a certain amount of sense in this case. So I'm going to choose Finish Face Exterior. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here at the intersection between column A and column 2, and I'm going to click right there, and notice that Revit will put a little X at that intersection, it will highlight both grid lines. Revit calls this an object snap, and it's snapping precisely to that intersection. And if I click and start to move my mouse, and let's zoom in even closer, notice what Finish Face Exterior does. So it's drawing from the point that you clicked, and the thickness of the wall is going completely in the opposite direction. Now, if you wanted to change that direction, you could actually tap your space bar and it would flip the other way. So if the exterior was actually to the bottom instead of the top, then you just simply tap the space bar. And if I tap it again, it will switch back again. Now, it turns out that I don't want to start right at that grid line. I'd actually like to move away from that grid a certain distance. So I'm going to press the escape key just one time. Now, it's very important that you press it only one time because if you press more than once, it'll cancel all the way out of the command. But if I press one time, notice that I'm still in the wall command and it preserved all of my settings. And that's important here. So I'm still generic 12. I'm still up to the parapet. I'm still finish face exterior. If you escape too many times, you'll lose all of that and you'll have to start over. What I want to do is change this offset value right here to two. So I'm going to type two, press enter. Revit will interpret that as two feet. Now I'll click at that same start point, click, and this time notice that when I start to move my mouse, it's actually offset two feet away from that location. Now I'm gonna stay in this command, roll the wheel back a little bit, hold the wheel down and pan over so that I can see grid A6, and I'll click at that intersection to place the next point of this wall. Now notice that it stays in the command. So again, I'm gonna hold in the wheel, drag up so that I can see grid D, go to that intersection, and then come back over here to this one, and then I'll click the Modify tool to cancel. Now I'm gonna pan and zoom slightly to show you the result, and you see how I have one, two, three walls now, each one set at a two-foot offset away from the grids that I clicked on. Now, those are my exterior walls. Now I wanna switch the tool to 
settings that are more appropriate for interior walls. So I'm going to go back to my wall tool and again, start with the type of wall that I want. Now I want you to watch the options bar as I choose generic five inch from the list. So particularly pay attention to the height and the location line when I choose that new type. Notice that the height reset itself to an unconnected eight feet and the location reset itself to center line. So this is what I was talking about a few moments ago when I said that it's always important to set the type first. So I'm gonna accept the location line of center because that seems more appropriate for an interior wall to me. But for the height, I wanna go up to level two this time. So your walls can go at any height you like, but if you use the levels to your advantage, you can set those heights relative to those levels and it allows you to create them quite easily at the correct heights. Now, notice that I can find the intersection between the grid and another wall. So that's where I'm gonna start down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna pull that straight up to the intersection with the other wall on the other end. Now I could draw at any angle I want, but I can also pull it straight up easily enough and click. Now I'm gonna zoom in, just put my mouse nearby where these two walls touch and roll the wheel. And notice that it does a clean joint there where those two walls connect. So this is something Revit just does automatically. There's nothing you have to do special in order to enable that behavior. Let me roll the wheel to zoom back out and then maybe pan over to this location here. Now, up until now, I've been using the grid lines to guide me, but you're not required to use the grid lines at all. In fact, your project might not even have grid lines, so you can draw walls anywhere that you like. So another really common technique to do is to simply click a point and start drawing and kind of sketch it out roughly at the size and shape that you want. So notice that I can draw this little rectangular shape very easily. I can subdivide this into two spaces. I can further subdivide this into two spaces. And I can do that all very easily without really worrying too much about the sizes. So we call this sketching. And sometimes it's easier to just roughly sketch in the layout first and then come back and modify it and make it more precise. So for now, I'm gonna focus on sketching it approximately where I want my walls to go, and I'll worry about modifying the sizes a little bit later. Now, notice that I'm able to go from end to end to wall in sequence. Revit calls this chain, and you can see that here on the options bar with this chain checkbox. Now, I've got this little L-shaped configuration right there, which is gonna be the entry to the restaurant, but I don't wanna have another wall at this endpoint. Well, you could uncheck chain or you could cancel the command, but it turns out if you just press escape one time, that will break the chain and keep you in the command. So if you remember to do that, you can save yourself a few steps and then I'll make one more set of walls going from here down to about here and then across to here. And now I'll click modify to complete the modification. So whether or not you're doing exterior walls or interior walls, it really just a matter of the settings that you configure in the tool and then you start to draw. And with a little bit of practice, you'll find that you can very quickly do a complete building layout and then come back later and massage things and modify their positions and make them much more precise. And that'll be the subject of the next video.